All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I've got another home launch golf video for you today. Uh, we're actually gonna be starting a new device series. Um, now the device might not be that new, but it is new to the channel. So what we're gonna be doing starting today is we're gonna be reviewing and kind of testing out the, the original SkyTrack device, as you can see down here uh, on my mat here below. Now I've been wanting to kind of have this device on the channel for a little bit because here recently in the last couple of months, it really has dropped its price to where it's kind of fallen more into that budget tier of launch monitors. And that's kind of what we've been doing here on the channel with the SC4, with the Garmin R10, and, and most recently with the MLM2 Pro. So real quick, we'll just kind of review. The SkyTrack original basically launched back in 2014, about a decade ago. Uh, it was kind of really the first, I would say, I would say personal use home launch monitor um, that, that was budget friendly or affordable. Um, it's kind of stayed at that $2,000 price point for most of its life here recently, within I'd say the last year or so, since they kind of developed the new SkyTrack Plus device, they've actually brought the, the price down as far as the new unit, and we've seen it continue to drop over the last year to where now to the point, you can even pick this device up new still on, on places like Amazon for about a thousand dollars and you can get it in the used refurbished market anywhere from refurbished on amazon to secondswing.com or even on ebay anywhere from probably like 600 to to 750 dollars as i was getting the device like skytrack decided to launch their new version 5.0 um, or their version 5 software so we're actually going to be taking a look at that kind of the differences between four to five and then we'll have a little bit of a demo here towards the end of the video. All right, so we're launching into the new version five software. Um, it did auto log me in, and then you just kind of select the profile you're playing with. So real quick, just to kind of go around the main login page or the home page here, you've got your profile you're logged in with up here at the top left-hand corner. Inside of this menu, you can kind of change the monitor that you're displaying the software on. Choose your dominant hand. Um, you can change your display for temperature uh, and also your distances and your speeds, whatever you you know prefer there and then your ball flight display. You can have it set to immediate, text to speech, or just normal. We'll leave it on immediate. And then inside of this, you can switch account um, or manage your accounts as well. And then if we just kind of kind of go around a screen here, over in the top right corner, uh, you can see that the device is not currently on. Um, it is trying to connect over network mode and Wi-Fi. And then if we go into my bag, you can set up your custom bag here. And then you can quickly, if you have more than 14 clubs, you can kind of have some extras down here and quickly drag clubs in and out of your bag. So that's pretty cool. Um, history wise, um, it, it will kind of show here like any of these modes that you're kind of playing in. Uh, Pin Seeker is something that is kind of still coming. It's not launched just yet, but it's really kind of cool that they give you kind of a, a shot history in these different modes that you have here. And then as far as the device menu, you can kind of see your software version, your firmware. It'll show your account that's registered when the device is connected. And then also when it's connected, you know, you can go to your device level. You can even send logs, uh, I believe, to SkyTrack support from here as well. And so this is the new UI uh, of version 5. It, it looks really cool. I mean, the big two things that you've got that they're going to be adding to this from version 4 is course play and then the pen seeker um, connectivity here. Practice, Swing Lab, and Challenges are all kind of familiar because that's kind of what they had in the old version of software. Speaking of the old version of software, let's take a look real quick just to kind of see the differences. So we can kind of see the old version 4, and what you'll still see, like if you're running this from an iPad, is the original kind of layout where you had practice, challenges, and game improvement. And then you had the profile in the top right corner, and then the device was connected there in the middle. You know, just in comparing that to the new version, um, much more modern look obviously and then they've added a couple of features like we just talked about but they did also with this new version change kind of their subscription model and so if we go back and look at what game improvement versus the play and improve packages used to offer you uh, game improvement was kind of like their basic package that pretty much got you everything except for simulation golf and so that was always uh, most recently 129.95 and then if you wanted to add on the play and improve uh, your total cost then was going to be 249.95 but that got you the, the WGT courses. It also got you the E6 courses. So that really brought you into uh, a simulation there. Now, looking at the new subscription model, just like the old model, the basic range is free still. The game improvement package has now changed to what they're calling essentials. It's still $130. So that's going to get you everything except for uh, any kind of simulation. And so you can continue to use all the swing lab features, the challenge features, uh, practice features with that. If you do, however, want simulation, they give you two options kind of now. You can still pay the additional 120. You can subscribe and do the WGT courses and the E6 stuff, or you can now 
pay the $220 a year and sign up for uh, the SkyTrack actual course play. We will be demoing some of that um, in some future videos and kind of compare and contrast to what it looks like in, in here versus like maybe GS Pro, other softwares and stuff. And then like all of the tabs across here, like I was saying, practice is pretty much the same. The range differences, there's a little bit of difference in the sky, the backdrop a little bit, and then the grass looks a little bit tighter and a little bit different than the old range. And then only other things I kind of really noticed, the mini map went from being kind of black and translucent to where now it's kind of more of a, a green color. Everything else really kind of looks the same, except for now you have what, what the setting is called practice area, uh, which I've arrowed to on the new version. And that's because you can actually change and you can go into a different range. Let's go in here and take a look at some of the other options that we have now in the version five. All right, so we can quickly see along the bottom here, it shows all ranges. We've got the default range, the wall, right to left command, left to right command, accuracy island. If we go to view all though, then it actually shows us the city range. Now, when you first come into this menu, you'll see little uh, down arrows next to all of these except for the default range that you'll have to download them. All right, we get back out to the main menu. Let's take a look at Swing Lab. Now, real quick, we can kind of see side by side uh, Swing Lab is basically just a rename of what game improvement used to be called because you're going to get the same features and functionality inside of this uh, where you had bag mapping, skills assessment, wedge matrix. All of those assessments basically have stayed the same. So then if we kind of pop back out to the main menu and we go into challenges, this again, I mean, it, it's the same essentially as what was in version four. You got the same challenges. It went from being challenge to challenges from version four to version five. But we can see that you get the same things here as closest to the pin, target practice, and longest drive. All right, and then if we take a look at the biggest new feature that they have, it's going to be the course play. So real quick, if we jump into course play, um, you kind of have your featured courses kind of listed down here at the bottom. We'll click into view all. And just like in the, the range menu, it kind of brings you into the, this, the same kind of layout with all of the different courses over here to the right. Now, it has launched with 30, 30 different courses. Currently, I do understand, I believe, I think the goal is to maybe expand this at some point to maybe two or 300 courses, but that's going to be on down the line. But that'd be very exciting if they could get to that level, because I think if you really want to compete with other softwares like E6 and with uh, GS Pro especially, you're, you're going to need a variety of courses for people to be able to play. So over here on the right, you can basically scroll through just up and down all the different uh, courses they do have to offer. I will say some of these are just par three courses, a couple of them, and then some of them might only have nine holes uh, like the Great Northern here. So they're not, I wouldn't say it's not a full 30, 18 hole courses, but just to kind of quickly show you how you would load into a course, we'll, we'll select Pebble Beach, select the course, it brings you into this menu where you can select your holes. So we can do full 18 or front or back nine. If you click on custom, it will basically unhighlight all the holes. And then you kind of just select which holes you want to play. Um, just for this demonstration, we'll kind of quickly just go out to hole number seven. Here's your kind of setup match options. So game mode is stroke play and it is kind of grayed out. You can't change that currently. Uh, and then you can have a concede score uh, or basically a max score. You can set that to whatever you like. You can, you can play with unlimited mulligans or you can dial it down to one, two, or three. Um, you can set up your putting. You can have it just do auto putt um, or you can have it putt out. And then you can set up your gimme. If you kind of set a gimme circle, whether you're on auto putt or putt it out, then it's going to kind of add an additional stroke once you get inside of that, that distance there. And then we've got pin position. Whereas like on GS Pro, you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday pins. On here, we have basically easy, medium, and difficult as options. And then you can also set your wind if you want to play in a high wind situation. So it can it can vary between 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 25, 20 to 25. And then you can also set your wind direction. So this would be a way of kind of maybe playing a course a little bit differently each time if you wanted to kind of make it a little bit harder on yourself by changing the direction of the wind. All right, so if we go next, we kind of get to the final screen, which is basically set up your players. Um, now, kind of default loads your profile as, as player one, and then this is where you can kind of add guest players and friends. Uh, you can you can set them at a different tee. If maybe they're a stronger player or, or not as strong as player as you, uh, make it a little bit easier or at least make it a little bit closer in scoring, you can kind of you can kind of change that, that teeing location just a little bit and then obviously set their handness. Now, I will say, like, I, I tried setting this up and then going back to see if it would let me change the game mode from stroke play but it doesn't so i'm assuming that that's 
something that will be released maybe in an update to take that player off. And we'll just go to tee off and just kind of show you real quick how it loads into the golf course and then kind of what the, the video looks like. And we'll, we'll take a quick look around the menu. First impressions, it, it looks pretty solid. I think they did a great job coming from not having any kind of course software to this being kind of their first release or first version. Um, so if we take a look around here, you've got basically, you know, your hole, uh, your stroke that you're on, uh, your overall score, top left corner. We've got a little menu button here so we can go to view our scorecard, instant replay. We can adjust our camera offset. Um, you can turn your green grid on and off, shot mode, uh, normal or putting, a tracer, you can turn this to solid, common or off, and then auto continue, you can set that to 10 seconds or off uh, if you would rather advance it yourself. Uh, and then we can also get out of the round here. But let's close this menu and then take a look over here on the right hand side. It shows we're connected, network mode, device, our battery status of the device, and then we've got our mini map here. And so the mini map looks pretty cool. You can aim looks like on the mini map wherever you would like and then you can even expand this to make it a little bit larger if you really kind of need to dial in your, your aiming location and then you also have the option too where you can collapse this off to the side to get it out of your view completely but let's bring it back over here and then let's take a look at our other options so there is a flyover option um, now this being a par 3 a flyover is going to be pretty short and then they also give you a drone option so you get kind of an elevated drone view and then you have a slider here where you can actually basically bring the view down. You can lower it or, or raise it depending on what you like there. And then when you close it, it kind of slowly goes back down to like your regular player view. And then they have a way you can kind of zoom in on the green and kind of take a look. And you can even turn your, your green grid on here so you can kind of see the breaks and, and kind of any hidden ridges and things that you might want to avoid. And then if we do just kind of, if we've, if we've clicked on the map and we've aimed ourselves off the flag, they do have a reset aim at the very bottom here. And that just kind of puts you right back on your target um, and on the pin. So, so yeah, overall initial impressions, I think this, this actually does look pretty good. All right, since we're already loaded into hole seven, we're going to hit a few shots just to kind of show you what, how this course play actually plays and how it looks a little bit. Um, we will do some more extensive course play videos in the future. I will say, you know, if you want to see a certain course that's in the list of 30 um, included in those videos, like make sure to leave that in the comments below and I'll try to get that in future videos for you. All right, so one thing that I have noticed like in their course play, there really is no way to actually do like a practice on course like you can in GS Pro. Um, so I'd like to hit this shot a few times. So what I did is I went ahead and set it to put out uh, on the settings. So this way I can hit from the tee, tee box and then Obviously, if I don't make a hole in one, then it's going to go to the green, but it's going to give me the option to use a mulligan. So then I can just keep hitting mulligan until I, so I can keep basically practicing this shot from the tee box. All right, so we got 106 yards down the hill, almost 30 feet here. Going to hit a nice, easy uh, 54 degree wedge and see if we can get something at least on the green. All right, got quite a bit of spin on that one. So I uh, went, went all the way back to about seven feet. And this is kind of what I was talking about. Because you don't have the option to do on-course practice, if you find yourself in one of these shots, if you set it to where at least you're put out so it doesn't auto-putt when you hit the green and you set your mulligans to maybe unlimited, then you could kind of put yourself in a situation where you could kind of on-course practice. All right, so we went ahead and used mulligan there. Uh, I'm just going to hit a couple of these from the tee box to kind of show you what it looks like. And then on the last one, if we get maybe like a 20 or 30-foot putt, um, then I'll actually put that out and kind of show you what putting looks like too. All right, so 26 feet, not terrible, but not as good as the first shot there. All right, so let's at least hit one more from the tee box. Yeah, I kind of blocked that one a little bit. All right, and just like the last one, we were at 25 feet. So this one, we are going to go ahead and put out to kind of show you putting a little bit. So we got about 25 feet left, a little bit down the hill. Uh, looks like it kind of breaks out initially to the right just a little bit, and then comes back left at the hole. So I kind of aimed out to the right. Uh, so since as the ball slows down, it's obviously going to go left 
a little bit more. Yeah, and all I was doing was removing the ball that I hit previously that was up there at the front of the screen, and you guys kind of saw that it was kind of a phantom read. So let's mulligan that and, and actually try to put it. All right, so we had the phantom shot, and then we had the error pop up there. Um, going to try to hit this. I don't think it didn't really give me a stamp reading, so I don't know how fast or slow these are. I think they're kind of playing a little bit slow, so try to see if I can't get this within a couple of feet. All right, not a terrible lag putt. Um, we can see that it gives me the ball speed at eight miles an hour and the club speed it says was at five miles an hour. And then I, I kind of push it two degrees. All right, see if we can just knock this little one in here real quick. All right, I will say I, I'm not really a fan of the putting. Uh, it doesn't seem to be as smooth and as polished as what you'd see like in E6 or even with, with GS Pro or on FSX Play. Um, so I do think that it seems like they've got a little bit of work to do on the greens because it seems kind of jumpy laggy And then we even saw that there was kind of a phantom shot detected So that's kind of why I was glad that I was playing with mulligans enabled and mulligans on just for that reason overall I think the, the course play graphics look great um, But because it's brand new software I think it's going to take a few months uh, to kind of work out some of these bugs and kind of polish some of these things off um, We kind of see like there's there's no on course practice mode. I'd like to see them add that I'd like to see them add new courses. Um, I think the ball physics in the course play is a little bit weird. Uh, I was having to hit a club that normally would carry well over this green with the elevation difference, but I don't think the software is really calculating the elevation at all. So yeah, I, I just think that there is some work to be done uh, it, uh, and everything. I think that's great, but they just we just need them to tweak a few things. All right, that's going to do it for the video today, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give the video a like. Uh, in the next video coming up, we're going to be kind of testing out and trying out all the new driving ranges inside of the SkyTrack version 5 software so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss uh, the notifications on that video when it drops and i'd like to thank y'all again for watching the video today y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next one